I have a bunch of crypto trades levels that I'm actually looking to buy at. So again, contrary to popular belief, I am not an all-time bear. <laughs> uh, bottom line is, yeah, I'm a trader. So when the charts tell me to be bearish, I'm bearish. When the charts tell me to be bullish, I'm bullish. And ultimately, there are some levels I'm watching on crypto that are actually getting intriguing. Yes, I have a short signal out on Bitcoin. We're in the money on that. Same thing on Ethereum, in the money on that. But there will be levels I cover, and then I flip it to the long side, and then I'll flip it to the short side again. Again, like I said at the beginning, I can make 100 times more money than a buy and hold investor. But ultimately, that's your first entry. Remember how I trade, and I'll leave you guys with this. All right, I don't trade where I go all in at any one spot. The reason I don't do that, even if I really love the level, is because I've loved levels before and they failed. And so I'm a defensive trader. When you become a defensive trader, you will make 100 times more the money that you made before. I know it sounds weird. Oh, wait, I'm buying less, but I'm going to make more money. You will. The reason you will is because when you're wrong at the first level, it allows you to trade around the position. All right, and that means adding a little bit here. Here we are today again with Gareth Soloway's Bitcoin analysis and this time even with his trade setups to help you profit from the current market state. But before we go into that, bad news about Bitcoin and the crypto markets are all over the place. Ledger, the most known hardware wallet, just released updates concerning users' safety. The largest Bitcoin conference in the world is expecting half the attendance this year. And even some of the best investors in the world, like Paul Tudor Jones, are saying people should not buy Bitcoin right now. But despite the bad news, Bitcoin is still holding near the 27,000 level even after a small breakout to the downside. According to Gareth Soloway, master trader and chief market strategist from InTheMoneyStocks.com and VerifiedInvestingCrypto.com, there are still many opportunities to profit from the crypto markets. He even goes further and says the way he trades these markets, which you will see in this video, even allows him to make over 100x more than other long-term investors who buy, hold, and pray. So you will see firsthand what trades Gareth is taking so you can make informed decisions and quick profits from this volatility instead of just waiting for the next bull run. Please pay attention until the end so you don't miss any of these. Before jumping into his trade setups for crypto, here's a quick overview of S&P and macro as we know it highly correlate with Bitcoin's next moves. The spiders today are inching up just a little bit. Not much movement here. Now, one of the things I want to point out is the volume recently has been very light. The markets have been going neutral to higher in general. Basically, we've been in almost the same range for the last month, even despite the debt ceiling talk. And again, let's talk about the debt ceiling here. So we continue to have negotiations. When we look at the S&P daily chart, there's almost no downside movement, right? What this tells us, and again, this is purely analyzing price action. It tells us that the market is not concerned, right? Investors are not concerned. All right, you have more risk being taken, whether it's stocks like NVIDIA, AMD rocketing just in the last couple days. NVIDIA is getting close to the 300 even number. That's actually one of the stocks we're going to look at for Max Payne in just a little bit. Upticking just a little bit. NASDAQ as well is upticking if we bring up the QQQ chart. Now the Qs, again, I want to show you some levels on the Qs because ultimately my macro analysis is still dead on here. Short term, I have a neutral to upside bias. I want to tell you why. So the neutral to upside bias comes from the price action, especially in the NASDAQ 100. We're almost in float mode. The volume being so light, and I just brought this up a minute ago, when volume is light, it's automatically helping the upside. Think about this. When volume is light, are institutions participating in a major way? The answer is no. All right, institutions are the main ones that will short markets. If you talk to 10 people out on the street, how many of them do you think has, have ever shorted? In fact, some of them may not even know how to short a stock or a crypto. So ultimately, we know that generally the retail crowd, which has less money, if the markets are floating up on light volume, they're the ones buying. The other thing to remember is that when you have retail investors, we are conditioned by Wall Street, we're conditioned by CNBC, Bloomberg, all these media outlets to be bullish. They're always talking about you know, the economy recovering, 
analysts are coming out upgrading price targets. In fact, if you look how at how many stocks have sell ratings out there versus buy ratings, it's literally like 100 to 1. Very rare a stock will ever get a sell rating. Most analysts are automatically bullish. Last thing I'll say on this in terms of light volume and why the markets tend to float up in light volume is because think about this. Inherently as humans, are we positive or negative? And the answer is we're positive. We're positive people. We're positive, a positive society. We think things will get better generally. In fact, if you're too negative, what do they do? They give you medication to make you positive. Right. So again, think about it like that is that generally we're always going to think things are going to go up. Things are going to increase in price and that's the way we can make money. Now I take it from a different angle. I look for these short term disparities and I rock it here. I'll, I'll buy here. I'll short here. I'll buy here, etc. and do it that way. Now take some notes. These are Gareth's trades for different crypto that can help you get some quick profits in the next few weeks. I have a bunch of crypto trades levels that I'm actually looking to buy at. So again, contrary to popular belief, I am not an all-time bear. <laughs> uh, bottom line is, yeah, I'm a trader. So when the charts tell me to be bearish, I'm bearish. When the charts tell me to be bullish, I'm bullish. And ultimately, there are some levels I'm watching on crypto that are actually getting intriguing. Yes, I have a short signal out on Bitcoin. We're in the money on that. Same thing on Ethereum, in the money on that. But there will be levels I cover, and then I flip it to the long side, and then I'll flip it to the short side again. Again, like I said at the beginning, I can make 100 times more money than a buy and hold investor. What we have here, guys, here's your Bitcoin chart, all right? Now, I'm going to move this trend line. I want to show you the trend line I'm following here. This is the one I've been talking about now quite a bit. What we do is we just put a trend line right there. What we can clearly see pivot low right through here, and then it went right through that top. To me, this is a bear flag on Bitcoin. Bear flag on Bitcoin starting to inch lower. Now, notice how bank stocks are up today and Bitcoin is down a little bit. That makes sense. Remember what happened when banks were collapsing. Banks collapsing, Bitcoin went up. So you're seeing a little... You're seeing the same pattern take place here where they trade inverse. All right. Now, again, the bear flag to me has me positioning for a target of around 24,800 to 24,000 as a first target range. So I'm still in the camp that this is going lower. I was the only one or one of the only ones out there. Maybe there was a one more person in the universe saying 30,500 would be the resistance and the pullback. That was obviously dead on, folks. Again, you have to be blind not to see that it was a dead on call there. Now I'm saying that, again, we are still going to head lower, but the next stopping point is right in the 24 to 25,000 range. Now, like I said, there are levels where I would start to go long. For me, where am I looking to potentially go long? Very simply put, if we bring a trend line right up here, you're looking at around 23,000. 23,000 would be an opportunity for me on the long side. And again, that's where I would start. So yeah, first target's 24 to 25, but ultimately, if we flush enough, I'm gonna look to go long for a bounce. Now again, please understand, I'm not a long-term investor yet in Bitcoin. Yeah, I have a tiny HODL position that I bought back in the 17,000 range. We talked about that when it happened. Uh, but again, that's only a tiny position. It wasn't what I intended to accumulate. Based on the charts, this is still a bear market rally. Now, again, I know your heartstrings, your, your gut, everything might tell you otherwise because you go on Twitter and you go on social media and you're so influenced by the influencers out there that you just can't hold your horses and you think it's a new bull market. Charts to me are everything. You guys can do that if you want. I'm fine with that. I look at the charts because I've made more money following the charts than really anyone in, in you know this day and age, right? I mean, I'm a chart guy. You guys know that. I'm neither emotional, I'm neither bullish nor bearish. It's just a matter of the levels. And that's helped me make a lot of money, helped my followers at In The Money Stocks make a lot of money and at VerifiedInvesting.com. Crypto, look at this. Look at the parallels. I'm a huge fan of parallels. Start drawing your parallels, guys. Check this out. Here you have a bear flag starting to form, beginning to downtick on Ethereum. Where's your next parallel? Down here around 1600 or just below. To me, that's where it's likely headed. All right, so again... Bear flag is bearish. I mean, again, I'm not making this up. Go in any textbook. Look at these stuff. Bear flag is bearish. That's why it has the name. Target for me, you're going to look at around the 1600 level. There'll be some support around 17 or so, but we kind of already kissed it at this low. So you're now looking at that 16, 15, 80 level. Where am I looking to buy Matic? All right, so Matic is interesting to me if it gets down to this level. Huge support down here on Matic. Guys, around 75, 74 cents. Could it go lower? Yeah. I mean, if Bitcoin really starts to collapse, it could go a lot lower. But ultimately, that's your first entry. Remember how I trade. And I'll leave you guys with this. All right. I don't trade where I go all in at any one spot. 
The reason I don't do that, even if I really love the level, is because I've loved levels before and they've failed. And so I'm a defensive trader. When you become a defensive trader, you will make a hundred times more the money that you made before. I know it sounds weird. Oh wait, I'm buying less, but I'm gonna make more money. You will. The reason you will is because when you're wrong at the first level, it allows you to trade around the position. All right, and that means adding a little bit here. Now it goes back to your break even. You can sell a little bit there. Then you bring it, then it comes back in. You add a little bit more. Ultimately, you're working your average. Think about kneading bread or clay or anything like that. You're working it to your favor. And that is the key. So the more defensive you are, the more you kind of question your level, even if it's a great level, the better you're going to be in the long run as an investor and trader. Please remember these three tips if you're taking action on any of these ideas Gareth shared. First, always do your research. Even though we share Gareth and other experts in the channel, no one is 100% right and the risk management is different from person to person. Second, as Gareth said, diversify your portfolio and don't go all in in a single asset or you may lose everything. Instead, split your risk and profits by different opportunities. Third and last, set clear entry and exit points. Don't be emotional about your trades, except that you will lose sometimes and just follow what the charts tell you. Big wins will compensate the small losses if you do things right. That's it for today. Did you enjoy this video? Want to get more curated content like this and Gareth Solo Way's Bitcoin analysis every day? Please leave a like and subscribe. Also, let us know in the comments below what crypto you are longing or shorting right now. Let's see what everyone is up to. Thanks.